Our next speaker has had a busy year. Uh, in addition to creating a, an automation tool for iOS, he's also the uh, father of a baby girl. Uh, congratulations, and please welcome to Francois Renaud. Um, can you hear me all right? Yes, so you can download the presentation from GitHub slash my name, iOS dash driver downloads if you want to follow um, while I'm presenting. Uh, I'm Francois Renaud. I'm working as a test engineer for eBay. Um, I'm also the, a committer for the Selenium project, and I'm responsible for the grid two part of it. So that's the part that allow you to run all the tests in parallel. And I will present you what uh, I've been doing for eBay with UI automation, so the tool that Apple uh, gives us for iOS native uh, automation. So a little bit of context first. So eBay is in more than 20 countries. I'm working in London, I'm part of the European team, so we don't have to test everything, we only test the European sites. But that's still 12 sites and seven languages. Uh, we're not or an automation team or a mobile team, we just have to test all the product that reach the site. And that's uh, Windows desktop application, the web, that's the biggest part, and also mobile. And as part of those, of those testing, we are doing some automation. But we're, not, uh, we're definitely not an automation team, we only do automation if we see the direct return. And we've been quite successful with that. Um, we've been successful not because we have a lot of tests or we are finding a lot of bugs, but because we've been able to free a lot of resources from manual regression to uh, feature testing where our QA are uh, adding more value. Uh, so for the automation piece, we haven't built any framework. We're only using open source. So we're using Twin, uh, an open source tool for testing Windows. We're using WebDriver for the web and UI automation for, uh, for iOS. We are testing everything in Java. Uh, the reason for that is that eBay is a Java shop, so that was like the normal tool. We're using TestNG for doing the test management and the reporting, and we're using Selenium and Twin uh, completely uh, unchanged for, uh, for running the test. And what's very important to us is that we're not building a framework. So eBay is not special enough that we need to have a framework on top of Selenium and Twin. We use that right out of the box. We have a couple of uh, helper class that help us access our QA environments, but that's, that's the end of it. So the goal when we started six months ago working on iOS was to build something really light and reuse as much of what we already have as possible and make it open source. So the first thing that we did was look at instruments. Uh, that's the tool that Apple recommends. It's shipped for free with Xcode, so that, that was a good start. That's a test with instruments. So the first thing is it's JavaScript. They didn't create their own crazy language, so we didn't have to learn something new. And the second thing is that it works. It doesn't do everything that we want, but it allows us to find the elements that we want to interact with and interact with them. So that's a very solid base for automation. The part that doesn't work too great is that, so it's JavaScript. This is fine to work with, but everything else that we have is in Java, and they didn't want to force our users to use JavaScript just because that's the language that Apple wants us to use. The second thing is it looks very much like Selenium IDE two years ago. If you look at the, if you look at the code, it's very, it looks like XPass. Uh, it's very content driven, and it will be a nightmare to maintain. I also doesn't run in parallel. You have to use the UI for everything. It also has no setup and teardown features. So you have, if you want to start the application, the eBay application, you have to start it in the five languages that, you, that we support for Europe. And we don't want to do that manually all the time. So we want to have that inside our uh, automation framework. You can get around most of the problem of uh, UI automation. The first thing is you can start instruments from the command line. So you can already get rid of um, all the UI problems. And since uh, iOS 4, 5, you have a perform task method that you can start from JavaScript and that allows you to get uh, commands from the outside and response to them. So you can 
start thinking about something that will look like selenium. So this is what, uh, that what we built. All the art stuff is done by instrument. So all the clicking, finding the element, and browsing the object tree is done by instrument. Uh, we built a small server on top of it that will be responsible for uh, starting the application with the right language, with the right SDK, and taking care of all the settings, clean up after the test, uh, this kind of thing. It will uh, talk to the client using a REST API. So the client part of it, the part that is actually used by the tester in the test, is kind of an empty shell. It doesn't do any logic. It only uh, generates the REST API calls and pass the, re the requests, the pass the responses. So that's um, what we built. When you have that, you have to decide what kind of REST API you're going to use. So you can start something from scratch, or you can use the Selenium API. Um, I'm already familiar with the Selenium API, so that was an easy pick. Uh, the Selenium API now supports mobile web, so most of the calls that we need, change the rotation, uh, set the location, the GPS coordinate and all that are already there. But it's, the, so the API doesn't fit perfectly. I would say it's like 90% probably. All the, co all the commands that I needed are there. Some of the command in the Selenium protocol makes absolutely no sense for native apps. Resizing makes no sense. The, all those methods uh, should be removed. And some of the methods have completely different parameters. So the most obvious one is find elements or find elements if you want to return an array. If you're testing the web, then your find element will be find by ID, by tag name, XPath, or CSS selector. It makes no sense for uh, testing native apps. So that had to change, but the command themselves are the same. So when you've got that, you've got your client, your server, the client implemented in Java, you can start uh, testing, and that worked fine. The part that didn't work so fine was the content management. Everything is very content driven with UI automation, and we have to test all our, all our sites, uh, all our uh, application in five different languages. And we didn't want to have five versions of each test, and we also didn't want to maintain a dictionary on the client side with all the different uh, languages. This is what you get if you're using UI automation. That's the representation of an element. You've got a label, a name, and a value, all of that is localized. You've got the coordinates, but that's not good enough to find your element. And you've got the type of the element. The type of the element allow you to filter, but it's not enough to uh, target the element properly. So you somehow have to manage the content before it reaches instrument. That's where building something that looks like Selenium is really helpful. Because we don't talk to instrument directly, we're talking to the server, then we can add some more logic in the server. Inside all your uh, iOS application, there is the localization already there. You've got a key for every piece of content and one file that contains the translation for that content key for every language. So you can take that and replace it when it reaches the server and you can, when it reaches instrument, have the right content. So that's what it looks like when you put all the different pieces together. Your, so in this example, I want to start the eBay application, so the bundle name equal eBay for the iPad, and I set the language to French. I then start my remote connection to the server and pass this capability, so that will start the simulator for the iPad with the eBay app already loaded. And when I want to click on the Agree button for the French version, I don't need to localize that. I can pass agree, and in this case, agree is the key. It just happens that for eBay, the English version is the key, so you have the impression that that's the English content, but that's actually the key. And the server localization flag, and that will do the translation automatically. So by the time it reaches instrument, um, it will already have the right value. Then I'm calling my find elements to get my button, and I'm calling tap on it. The next thing that we had to do, so all that was working really fine, but we had to go open Xcode, go into all the localization, st localization strings and all that every time we wanted to find something, that wasn't really convenient. 
So what you can do is build a small inspector, very similar to the one that uh, Frank uh, showed, except that it also has uh, the localization part. So at the bottom right corner, you've got the L10 and part. For every element that I highlight, if I can find the localization in the localization string, then I will show, I will put that here. So when I write my test, I can just copy paste the key, create my criteria based on that, and run that. So it's time for a small demo. So if you put all that, what does it look like? So first, we're using the IDE that we use for every, for everything else. Mobile is not special enough that we have to install something else. Um, I run it from my Mac, but I could run it from a Windows machine or Linux machine. It doesn't make a lot of sense to write the test on Windows or Linux if you're writing the test, but being able to write the test and execute them remotely means that you can run them from the CI and you can have your CI for web driver that runs some IE test and you can run from the same CI some iOS test. I'm using testng to run the test, and I put a breakpoint in my test. So it's gonna start the iPad, the simulator, and it will reach the breakpoint. When it reaches the breakpoint, so it stops all the whole application, and I can start the simulator and see why it doesn't find the element. So I can mouse over, find my elements. Um, when it's yellow, that means that it didn't find any translation. When it turns blue, it found one. So for most of the elements that we want to interact with, it finds the translation, and we can use that to write some test cases that we can reuse across all the different uh, languages that we support. And that's a complete example of what I the, the code for what I've just shown. So again, it's using testng and Eclipse for running the test, so no need for a specific ID you specify what kind of capability you want. If you're using Selenium, that's gonna be very familiar to you. You start the connection to the remote server and you start the simulator there. And then the biggest difference with Selenium is that the Selenium used by to select the element, I don't find it really appropriate for UI, uh, for native application. So we have this criteria concept that you can combine and that allows you to pick exactly what you want. Um, so I'm selecting my button, clicking it, and then uh, enter my user ID and password, and I'm taking a screenshot at the end. So that was the demo. And then why do we use the Selenium protocol in the middle? Um, it was easy, because it's already there, but I don't think that's a good justification for using an API. Uh, there are, I think, two really interesting things with the Selenium protocol. One, and I think the biggest reason why Selenium is so, so successful now, is that the API is super stable, and it's becoming a W3C standard. You can write your test today, and you know for sure that when Opera will run the new version of their driver in three months, the test will still pass. So this kind of stability makes writing Selenium tests really nice, that would be really good to have that for mobile as well. The second thing is, if you're using the Selenium protocol, so the JSON wire protocol, you've got a lot of tools that you can pull directly from Selenium. And the one that I'm interested in is Selenium Grid. If you use that, instead of having your one client talking to one uh, server, you can put the hub in between, and you will have the hub acting as a dispatcher or a load balancer, and you have all your different simulator running in different machines, and you can start running all your tests in parallel. So you still use UI automation for the clicking and the finding elements, but you can use the language that you want for writing your test, the test framework that you want to organize them, and you can run everything in parallel. And I have the last demo that shows everything together. That's the Selenium Hub. That's the one that you get if you download everything from the Selenium main page with absolutely no change to it. On the left-hand side, I plugged three virtual machines configured to run the eBay app with the simulator. On the right-hand side, I have one machine that runs a real device and two web nodes just to show that you can really plug that into a Selenium Hub. 
Then I have my test. So the test, again, using Java and test engine. Uh, the test is only uh, 200 lines long, I think you can read, but that's not really important. Uh, the test does four things. It runs sign-in on a real device. It runs sign-in on uh, the simulator. It runs sign-in on the iPad, taking the language as a parameter. So with the same test, it runs Germany, France, and uh, UK. And it has a web test at the end. And all those tests are doing something really simple. They open the page, they go to sign-in, they enter the user ID and password, and take a screenshot. So all that is started from the IDE, but you could start that from the from a CI if you want. And that's what it looks like. So the, the top row is three VMs running from a single Mac Mini. So you'll see that they are quite slow. Uh, they are slow to start the simulator and click on everything. That's because that's a Mac Mini with only a dual core. So it's the smallest that you can get. But I think that's also interesting to test in those conditions. Because that means that even if your your three simulators are competing for the CPU, you still have no timing issues. It still works fine and it's relevant. Uh, at the at the bottom, you've got your two web nodes and one device node. So everything is working uh, fine enough. We don't have any problem with it, and it solves all the issues that we've had for native apps. It's not perfect, though, so several problems. One is we're using a call from the iOS 5.0, so you can't test that for old for uh, older version of that. So 4.3, you can't test. You can only test with SDK 5 and above, so 5, 5.1, and 6. Um, it doesn't work really well on devices. So on this demo, I show a device, but the device is read-only. So you don't have a setup and a teardown. When, if I go to the sign-in page for eBay, sign in and stop the test, the next person using the device will be already signed in with my test account. So you can't really use that in a real test environment. If you just want to check that it kind of works without touching the app, then you can. But for real work, when you want test isolation, then using a, a simulator is better. Those two drawbacks are not too important for me. Uh, the one that is really a problem is that you can't test easily uh, HTML pages that are embedded in your app. So if you look, um, if you look on the iPhone, it starts the eBay app and it starts the user agreement page. That is an HTML page. I can still go and pass it, but instead of having an HTML page and having a web driver like I should have, I have the HTML page as a page composed of native elements. So instead of being able to use a CSS selector or ID or uh, XPath to select my button, I have a list of 200 uh, static text and static button, and I have to navigate that. So you can use it as a workaround, but if you have an app that is only native, only uh, HTML, that will be really annoying. Uh, but it still has a lot of advantages. So it requires very little work to make it work. I think it, it was about four months to have everything running, including the test cases. It integrates really well with uh, all the infrastructure that we already have, and it completely decouples the automation framework from the test framework and the language that you want to use for uh, testing your app. So in our case, where we have uh, not only iOS, but all the different platform to cover, that means that we can use the same, uh, the same language and test framework for everything. And that's it. Is there any question? Oh yeah, and one more thing. Uh, the to-do list, <laughs> the, so it's not entirely finished. There is no documentation. Oh, there is one page of documentation. Um, the API is not completely ironed out. And I've done mostly the calls that I need for eBay. So all the calls that I need to use for testing the eBay apps are done. But if you're using something that we don't use, you will probably have to implement it yourself. So typically, the set location where you set the speed of your device, we don't use that in our app and in our current test, so I haven't implemented it. But usually to implement, it's quite easy if it's already in the, in the UI automation tool. 
What's a bit harder is to find an app that is open source to be able to have a unit test to test that it, the, the implementation works. And now I can take questions. Where could one find such awesome code on the internet? Sorry? Uh, do you have like a GitHub URL? Yes. No, it's on the first slide. I'll share the slide, I think. I'll upload them. So it's on my name slash iOS driver. I'll go back to the demo, but it looks nice. Um, have you uh, driven this from any other language uh, other than Java? No, we only use Java, uh, but I think honestly it takes like two or three days to build the, to build the client. So there is no real need to, I mean, if you need it, you just do it. Otherwise, you learn Java. How far do they differ from the Selenium ones? Um, the API doesn't. Uh, the client does. It doesn't use uh, web elements. And it also it's also a little bit different in Java. Every time you get an element back, it's cast to its real type. So instead of getting a generic element back, you're getting a UI button or a text field or an encrypted text field. But it's just a convenience method. I mean, if you want to build another Java client, you can return elements everywhere, then call the method, and if they don't exist, it's going to throw you an exception. Thank you. You mentioned that you uh, captured the screenshots as part of the automated testing. Yeah. So does someone go and manually verify those screenshots? Or is yes. Okay. So that's when I said at the beginning on the first slide that we don't automate everything. A big, uh, one thing that we don't automate because we don't think it's worth it is layout testing. It's easier for us to take screenshots with every step when we do the automation and then have a QA go manually through all the screenshots and spot all the problems. So there's a question about your localization. Uh, eBay is enormous. You support five languages. How do you generate the, uh, the key to string translations? So that's the developer doing that. That's part of the app itself. So when they, when they write the app, they make it localizable, and they send that to the content management team, and they translate. And that's the end of the demo. Um, so what it shows here is the default uh, is the default test ng report. So you don't have to do anything. You don't you don't need to build your own framework for doing the reporting. It captured the screenshots and it put them uh, all in there. You can build your custom report if you want to have something a little bit different. But if you just want to spot check, you can download test ng, run it, and you will have all the information that you need to analyze the failures. If a page constructed out of a client side of JavaScript, and if I want to test a you know, JavaScript uh, library uh, directly, then uh, how do you uh, test in that case? You mean send the JavaScript directly to instrument? Yeah. Um, not I, not I, from the uh, HTML, uh, from the user's perspective, but um, if I want to test uh, you know, JavaScript inside uh, directly. That is not supported. Uh, I don't think that's supported by UI automation. I don't think you can do it. Maybe I missed. Um, do you hook this test into your CS server? Uh, yes, we're running them from Jenkins. OK. Um, how fast did you can finish a turnover? Let the developer know this one. Checking doesn't work. So we're, the way we test is very black box. So we don't run that after every commit. Uh, the development is done in the US and we're testing from Europe. So they do the test, they send a mail saying we have this uh, SVN tag that you should regress and we test after that. So we don't have that triggered after every commit. And to answer the question how fast, it really depends on how many nodes you put. If you have three nodes, then you take the sequential time and you divide it by three. If that's still too long, you put more hardware to the problem. Have you ever thought about some cases you want to use a real phone instead of a simulator? Yes, so with UI automation, it's not easy to do. And because we want to automate the easiest thing first, 
we test, we automate all the stuff on the device and where it requires a real phone, we have some real phone and we do manual QA for that. Is, is running simulator faster or running a real device faster? Which one faster? Uh, what, which one run faster between what and what? Yeah, in terms of, in, in terms of a test speed. For device and simulators? Right. Um, at the moment, I would say simulators are faster because you don't have to change the language manually. So that step is faster. Otherwise, there is no difference between the simulator and, uh, and the app on the real device. All right. Thank you, Prince Paul.